It is the molecular structure of methanol. This was a choice I made to mark my skin myself um, and have it be my choice for the first time. At the Chemical Safety Board, we hear a lot of compelling stories from accident victims. In 2006, Calais Weber was a 15-year-old student at a prestigious boarding school in Ohio. She worked as a model. She loved school, especially chemistry. But her life changed forever one day in January 2006 when she and other students showed up for chemistry lab. It was actually her experience and others like hers that got the CSB involved in laboratory safety issues. Uh, it was called the Rainbow Experiment. It was meant to show how different chemicals burn at different light frequencies. So the flames end up being different colors when you burn them. And in the demonstration, uh, she had it set up uh, in little dishes, uh, the chemical salts mixed with an accelerant. And uh, none of us knew at the time what it was. Uh, it turned out to be methanol. She had told us that when she did demonstrations, we didn't need to wear, wear our safety gear. So no aprons, no goggles. And she performed it on her desk at the front of the classroom instead of one of the hoods. Not even a couple minutes into the experiment, the red flame began to diminish a bit. And in the sink, there was a gallon-sized jug full of uh, clear liquid. And we didn't, none of the students knew what it was but she took it out of the sink and uncapped it and said, I better be careful or the bottle will explode and uh, poured it onto the open flame and it exploded. And because I was right in front, I, uh, I got the brunt of it. And I still don't know if the blast knocked me over or if I was trying to duck and fell over, but um, I ended up on the ground and I remember thinking, I'm on fire. Oh my gosh, I'm on fire. I was in the hospital for two and a half months. I was put into a chemically induced coma within the first couple days of being in the hospital. And I was put into that coma for about a week. And when they brought me out of the coma, I hallucinated for four days. I, um, I didn't sleep at all. I just hallucinated being on fire. Um, I hallucinated about the teacher, about my school, um, and just explosions everywhere all the time. It feels like with this type of injury that you've had so much taken away from you unnecessarily. And to keep reading about other people who've had very similar experiences, it's just, it's tragic and it, it shouldn't happen. The experiment should have been performed in the hood, one of the hoods. There shouldn't have been any extra accelerant at all in the classroom except the amount that was going to be used. And we all should have been wearing safety gear. Very nearly anything that could have been done wrong was done wrong. And it was definitely preventable. When you're in the lab, oftentimes, even if you're feeling slightly unsafe, there's sort of an unspoken um, understanding that, no, no, it is safe, don't worry. Um, and you, you naturally want to put that trust in the teacher, the professor. But while it can seem daunting, it's, it's perfectly OK to speak up if you're not feeling safe, to always question and, and if you're given a piece of information on safety, read it. While I wouldn't change what happened to me in terms of my injury, I'm at a place in my life where I have accepted it and I wouldn't change what happens if I could just because of where I am now. I, I absolutely wouldn't wish it on anyone else. <laughs>